So about a year ago, I made a big decision. I decided to focus all of my attention on my art and not get sucked into the social media vortex. And you know what? It's been amazing. I've learned so much, owned my skills and let go of things that were holding me back. And now I want to share all of those tips and strategies with you that helped me create better art that also sells. Because at the end of the day, I truly believe that everyone has the ability to create art that they are proud of and that makes them happy, even if it feels like social media is working against you. So let's dive in and get started. The first thing I want to talk about is how important it is to not get too caught up in likes and followers. I know it can be tough, especially if you are an artist trying to make a name for yourself. But focusing on the real substance of your art is what's going to make a difference in the long run. If your art is good, people will want to buy it, even if you don't have a huge following. For example, my last post on Instagram only reached 5000 people, which is not so much compared to what I used to get. But you know what? I still sold my painting because it was good and fairly priced of course. I don't mean to sound arrogant or unfair to other artists who are struggling to sell their work. Believe me, I've been there. But sometimes all it takes is a few tweaks here and there to create something really special and to find the right buyers. It's also important to not focus on Instagram only, but to build a following on other platforms as well, such as Facebook or TikTok. There could be collectors interested in your art that might not see your art on Instagram due to the algorithms, but might on other platforms. Another thing that's really important if you want to create good art is knowing the fundamentals. I've seen so many paintings over the years that just didn't quite hit the mark because the anatomy was off or the faces looked a bit wonky. Of course, except for artists like Picasso who made it their brand. You know what I mean eyes that don't match up, hands that are too big, arms floating in mid-air. I follow a few artists who could really take their work to the next level if they focused on getting these fundamentals right. But hey, we've all been there, right? It's just a matter of practicing and improving and luckily there are some great tools out there, like Just Sketch Me, that can help. This app is seriously a game changer when it comes to practicing the fundamentals of anatomy and poses. I mean, have you ever struggled with wonky hands or disproportionate body parts in your art? Well, with Just Sketch Me, those problems will be a thing of the past. And let me tell you, I was beyond thrilled when they sponsored this video. It's just that useful. In this day and age of mid-journey and AI art, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the crazy anatomically incorrect images out there. But with Just Sketch Me, you can not only identify those problems in your own work, but also practice your fundamentals to perfection. There are so many poses and models to choose from, and you can even build entire scenes. Plus, you can save your favorite poses for easy access later on. And can we talk about the mermaids and dragons? I mean, how cool is that? With the hand editor, you can create exactly the hand position you need and the lighting options are seriously next level. Harsh light is always the way to go for creating shadows with sharp edges. Trust me, it makes a huge difference in your art. You can even change the background and skin colors and turn off the grid if you want to paint over your work digitally. And the best part? Just Sketch Me works on any device because it's browser based. So you can practice your favorite poses and techniques anywhere, anytime. Just Sketch Me is available for free with no time limit. So what are you waiting for? Sign up using the link in the video description and let's get sketching. Now that we've covered the importance of fundamentals, let's talk about precision. The key to taking your paintings from good to great. Sometimes, even when artists paint anatomically correct figures, they might still struggle with capturing precise details, especially in crucial areas like the eyes. I faced this issue in my own art, but luckily it's pretty easy to tackle. For example, when I paint with acrylics, I've noticed my paintings can become wobbly and imprecise. That's because acrylic paint isn't as smooth as oil paint and not very opaque, which means that it requires multiple layers to cover an area, which can result in losing sharp edges and precision. My solution is to paint on a larger canvas. This gives me more space for details without being hindered by the materials. Most of my larger paintings are done with acrylics, but when I work on a smaller piece, 
for example around 40 by 50 centimeters, I prefer my watercolor based mixed media technique, which allows for maximum precision. Remember though that precision doesn't always equal detail. A piece can be full of details but still imprecise if the focus is misplaced. I always concentrate on the face and eyes, where I enhance the appearance of precision with intentional hatching to emphasize specific areas and make them look more refined. But I won't paint every single hair strand for example. That would be time consuming and unnecessary, as hair painted as a shape instead of individual strands suits the composition in my painting style better. The key is to carefully consider where details and precision make sense and where they don't. And speaking of precision and detail, be sure to check out my Patreon page, where I will be featuring this very painting as a step-by-step -step tutorial. I will show you how to fix blotchy watercolor spots, master my hatching technique and achieve that soft, delicate look for faces. Join me on Patreon for access to my upcoming tutorial on this painting, as well as a wealth of other resources to help you hone your skills, such as 200 videos, progress images and learning materials. If you are one of my Patreon members, you are already on the right path to success in the art world. But remember, it's not just about technical skills, it's also about how you handle criticism and how to do it effectively. So let's dive into that topic now. I used to struggle with accepting criticism because I took things too personally. But after some recent reflection and self-observation, I've made an interesting discovery. If I thoroughly critique my own work throughout the painting process, for example by using a method where I compare my painting side by side with my reference on my computer, I become more open to accepting external criticism. I believe the toughest criticism to hear is the one that you're already aware of. For instance, if I know there is an issue with facial symmetry and someone else points it out, it feels particularly uncomfortable, but if I've already found and fixed 90% of the mistakes myself and then someone highlights something I didn't notice, it's not so bad. I know I gave it my all and the remaining issues could only have been spotted by an outsider anyways. It doesn't feel as bad because I can still be proud of my efforts. Of course, not all criticism is valid. Especially when it comes from someone who can't differentiate between personal taste and the execution of an artwork. For example, I might paint a beautiful fairy, but some people may find it too girly or tacky. That's just a matter of taste and not a genuine critique. It's important to seek feedback from people who can make that distinction. A helpful critique might be, the fairy isn't my cup of tea, but it's well painted. However, the arm is too long. This type of critique is useful. Recently, I even received a funny indirect critique myself. After sharing my thoughts on AI on Facebook, I got some expected negative comments. One person sarcastically said, well, I can't take an artist who uses different light sources in her painting seriously. I actually found this comment amusing and somewhat helpful because while I do use multiple light sources coming from the Frankenstein-like process with which I make my references, it's never been a significant concern for me, but it reminded me to pay attention to light and shadow in addition to anatomy, color and composition, as they can all contribute to a more polished piece. So thank you, snarky commenter. Another side of constant criticism from yourself and others is that you will also develop a much thicker skin. Years ago, I wouldn't have stood my ground and defended my own opinion on AI against the crowd so rigorously. But today I'm just a lot more confident than I used to be and even if thousand people disagree with me, I can still have a different opinion as long as I can back it up with arguments. Well, I'm a bit off the mark now, but in summary I'd like to say that you have to be open to criticism. Just start small and try to iron out most of the mistakes yourself before subjecting yourself to the criticism of your significant other, a mentor or the general public. Speaking of criticism, I have some exciting news for you. You can still register for my live online course until Friday, April the 7th, where you will receive personal feedback and guidance from yours truly. In this course, we will create a beautiful masterpiece inspired by the legendary masters Klimt and Moni. Whether you're a beginner or an intermediate artist, I've got you covered with two versions of the painting. A simple one for those who are just starting out and an advanced one for those who want to challenge themselves. 
And the best part is, you will receive personal feedback and critique from me to help you perfect your skills. This course is not only about painting, but also about how to use technology such as AI or Photoshop to create references and master the art of painting realistic portraits. To sign up or find out more, just click the link in the video description or head over to my website at leoba.info. I can't wait to see you there! The fourth item on my list is all about balance, which is such a crucial element in creating a captivating piece of art. When an image isn't balanced, it just doesn't have the same impact. Imbalance can manifest in various ways, like mismatched colors, a disorganized composition where the portrait might be squeezed into a corner or off-center, making it feel unsettling. For my last painting, for example, I had to redo the whole preliminary drawing because my painting looked too squashed in the format. A messy appearance, which makes the overall image look muddy, or elements of the composition not working well together. I like to think of all these aspects as balance. When I'm in the final stages of my painting, usually feeling a bit unsatisfied, and my husband asks me what takes me so long, I always tell him that I need one to two hours to bring balance back to my artwork. For instance, in the painting you see here, the hair silhouette was off and I had to adjust it. The flowers and the dress were too light, which took away from the face, so I added a layer of gouache paint to soften the contrast. In the end, I use an abstraction technique where I pick up some of the painting's colors, in this case turquoise, light blue and reddish black, and apply them with a dry brush technique in rough vertical strokes. This helps connect the colors, create highlights and balance in the overall color scheme. For example, this painting was very pink, so I used complementary colors like blue and turquoise to counterbalance it and to add vibrancy, like you can find in the old Impressionist artworks from Claude Monet, for example. The last and most important point on my list is to listen to your intuition and pay attention on how you feel when looking at your painting. Have you ever felt a strange sensation in your stomach or you were bored while looking at your art without really knowing why? Trust me, you need to sharpen your senses and pay attention to this feeling, as it's a clear sign that something is off with your painting. It took me years to realize this and to trust my intuition, and believe it or not, I go through this with every single painting I create. Each time I need to rescue the painting and work on it until that feeling goes away. I've come up with some strategies for turning a not so great painting into a fantastic one. The best technique is to take a photo of your painting, load it onto your computer and look at it in the Windows Explorer as a thumbnail, right next to your reference. Ideally, you should also flip the image so that the flaws become visible at once. The shock might be overwhelming, but after fixing the issues, you will feel incredible. You might only get 100 likes on Instagram, but serious collectors will recognize your talent and your fans will fall in love with your art. For example, a collector told me recently that they have been following me for years, but back then they just couldn't afford my art. But now they finally could. And because I didn't give up and kept the quality of my art high, they stayed loyal to me and finally bought a painting. If you always do it this way, you will create paintings that not only make you proud, but also find buyers. You can showcase in your portfolio for the rest of your life turn into stickers, tutorials, videos or prints and simply represent you as an artist. Trust me, it's worth it. So don't be disheartened by algorithms. Remember, real people are looking at your art and deciding whether to buy it or follow you. Treat every piece of art you create as a representation of you as an artist. If you do everything right and only 100 people see your painting, but it's well crafted, there will be interest and buyers for it. I hope you found this video both helpful and enjoyable. Please let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos or topics you'd like me to discuss. Earlier this year I asked for video ideas on the community page and I want to thank you again for your input. Although I couldn't tackle all your suggestions due to my busy schedule, I definitely implement some of them in future. I wish you a creative day and I hope this video leaves you feeling inspired and motivated to keep going. Bye bye!